Hey Staten Island, this is HealthWish, a conversation about the state of healthcare in the fabulous fifth borough. Our aim is to raise issues, raise awareness, and raise health. Because when we raise health, we raise everyone. In today's episode, HealthWish is joined by two heavyweights in the healthcare space, Staten Island University Hospital Executive Director, Dr. Brahim Ardolik, and Staten Island Borough President, the Honorable James Otto. Give it a listen. So I wanted to ask you about food insecurity. One of the things that our community relations department has really been working heavily on is trying to work with different organizations to try to get more food into the community. I know that healthy food and having access to that is something that you're very passionate about. I just wanted your thoughts on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big believer in the, the truism that healthcare starts in the kitchen. And I think it all starts with food. And, the, and we need a food revolution in this country. The, the, the bad stuff is subsidized and, and is cheap and the good stuff is too expensive and inaccessible for so many communities. So we've undertaken an initiative with Snug Harbor and we funded them to, to buy a bunch of their product from their farm to get it to the pantries and, and get it into the hands of Staten Islanders in, in need. But, you know, I, I've always was a, a believer about, like, you know, discipline and that, you know, you just got to eat right. But I've come to realize after a lot of reading that, that when it comes to food, uh, supply dictates demand, and production is over, is overwhelming, and the industry is um, is is super aggressive in marketing crap and selling it cheaply. Um, and we're three or four year, uh, three or four generations into the, this food industry that's killing Americans and, and you know the diabetes numbers and it starts with food and you know this is this goes to the origins of agriculture it's deep it, it, it speaks to social justice and man I, I, I would love to be on the front lines of fighting that revolution because the stuff in our supermarkets is is killing Staten Islanders New Yorkers and Americans and so I applaud you and your team for all of your efforts in expanding access to real food. Yeah, and if you really want to understand what this is all about, I dare you to go and sit and try to prepare a healthy meal for what it would cost you to get a value meal at one of these fast food places. I dare you. Just go actually try to prepare a healthy meal and do it within the confines of the cost of that. And it's, it's I don't think you're going to be able to. Uh, Doc, it, 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 it amazes me that we are in an era of outrage. Everyone's outraged, and their outrage leads to outrage on the other side, and we're in this, you know, pong game of outrage. And no matter how innocuous the comment is, it leads to outrage. Yet at the same time, Americans don't care that big food comes into their homes, beats them up, beats up the insides of their loved ones, and takes their money doing it. And we're not angry that supermarkets, 95% of everything in the supermarket is, is bad for you. And no one seems to be angry about that. Um, the bruises and the illness is, is on the inside. You don't see the bruises on the outside, but they are coming in and hurting you and your family and subsidized with your tax dollars. It, it really is upside down. And while I don't hold out a lot of hope that Washington will fix it, the grassroots efforts that you're undertaking and we're undertaking at Borough Hall you know, have to happen, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud of what we're doing. I'm, I'm really happy to see what you're doing. So this is a great segue because i got to ask this before we finish. Um, this last two years definitely changed me, uh, definitely changed how I look at certain things and how I look at the small things when it comes to health care. You know, you had to be, you know, a rock to not be touched by some of the amazing scenes of family being reunited. It's very hard. I don't think any human being can watch the videos of people being reunited, the clap outs from hospitals and some of these amazing things and not be truly touched. But I, I've kind of come back to the point of like these truly ridiculously human moments that are every day. So I started a healthcare heroes thing on my Instagram account for people that you wouldn't necessarily know. And it's been an amazing opportunity to kind of highlight some folks do an amazing job. The one I'm just doing coming up is a nurse by the name of Ava Shaw. And Ava Shaw sings to her patients in the medical ICU. What is cool about Ava is Ava doesn't sing since COVID. Ava just sings, right? And she's been doing this since she's been in the ICU at Staten Island University Hospital. 
And there was a moment fairly recently which brought, which brought, which brought to my attention because she and her patient who got a little better started to duet. Wow. So we're trying to get permission to show that video and we'll hopefully we'll be able to show it soon. So there was a duet in the ICU which was incredibly beautiful. And for me, it's kind of why we do this. It's those really human moments that demonstrate why we do the things we do. So I was just curious, do you have one of those really human moments that you wanted to share? First of all, let me, let me say thank you for all the, those videos that you put out. You guys did a phenomenal job and it was so needed putting out those videos and showing the hope that we had to hang on to. So kudos to you for, for doing that and showing Staten Islanders you know, that there was some light at the end of the tunnel and to encourage them to do all the things that we needed to do to get through the pandemic. And it was a unifying moment each time you put out a video it showed your team uh, applauding a, another Staten Islander coming out of the, the hospital. I think beyond COVID, uh, you know, I, I, I'll answer it this way. One of the phenomena, one of the tragedies, one of the concepts, however you want to describe it, that I've unfortunately have had to kind of learn and come to grips with since being in office has been the, this unnatural occurrence of, of children predeceasing parents. Certainly 9-11, and I got to know a lot of families. Um, it's just unnatural, and, and parents lose a part of them that no matter how much time goes by, they just, you could just see that they're never the same. And one of the moments I will carry with me long after I'm out of office is walking into Linda and Bob Ollis's home in Newark, or Grant City, Newark, with the mayor we helped convince Mayor de Blasio to name the, one of the new ferry boats. In fact, the new class will be the Ollis class. It would be named after their son, who was a staff sergeant, who now famously put, put his body in front of a Polish soldier and lost his life saving, you know, other people and um, made the ultimate sacrifice. And it's just a, and um, the look of, pride and joy on Bob and, and Linda's face is something that is, um, and it just captures all of it. Um, but yeah, there, there have been so many, so many moments over the last 30 years and, and it, 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 so, it just reminds you like, despite all the differences and all the, uh, the times that folks try to highlight the differences, at the end of the day, all of us want pretty much the same thing and that is to, you know, do whatever we can for our, our kids and, and make their lives a little better. And, and, it, and um, so your, your moments that, that you, you've pointed to in those videos and, and highlighting some of the great heroes of your institution, it, it just another reminder to Staten Island is that it, it just takes down some of the divisions and it, it shows some of our common humanity and commonality. And it's a, it's a simple but a really, I think, profound thing that you're doing. And, and, uh, I applaud it. Yeah, and it's interesting that the last 20 years that they've showed us anything is it's been multiple opportunities to realize how important all of these heroes are, right? So we go from 2001 and fully realizing what our firefighters and what our police officers do for us to then realizing what our soldiers do for us and the wars that we've had since then and then now realizing what our healthcare workers do for us and it's that sense of we truly need one another regardless of which of these jobs you have and that yeah they're truly all heroes and if we can remember that and be human to each other it's going to really get us to a much better place but we've had our opportunities to really see this now yeah, and you are using the technology and social media to unify people and it's a it's a platform that is used so often to divide and it it is it, it's a wonderful thing and i i applaud you for doing it and i, and I encourage you to keep doing it. And um, there are enough people out there trying to highlight the differences and separate us. And, and you guys have done a wonderful job of, of showing our common humanity. So, And I'll give you a perfect example of that. It's funny that you say this. So uh, we recently ran a little contest of, hey, who's your favorite healthcare hero, right? So we said, you know what? We've been doing this for about a year. Let's let LSS ask everybody to be able to vote who their favorite healthcare hero was. And we thought it was a great opportunity for people just to talk and actually kind of get a little buzz and get staff talking to each other. But I just assumed it was going to be whichever employee came from the largest unit. Interestingly enough, the employee that won their favorite healthcare hero was Juan Serta, who essentially delivers equipment to all the floors. And it was so cool to see 
the nurses and the PCAs and the doctors vote for Juan because, and they all said, if Juan doesn't do what he does and do it with the kindness that he does, I couldn't do my job. And it was really, honestly, we wound up doing something because we thought it would be a fun thing to do with the staff, and it wound up being this really touching thing, and a truly exceptional person won who, honestly, people wouldn't even know who he was. And that's the coolest thing, that we all do need each other to do these jobs. Yeah. That's the culture that Mr. Dowling talks about. So all of you should be really proud of that, that you've created that, that atmosphere. And, and I think highlighting it is is so important. And listen, I will howl into the wind with, with those positive things on social media in the face of all the trolls and the critics. It, it, it needs to happen. You need to remind Staten Islanders of our, our commonality. There's enough other and, 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 and self-division happening, and you, you bring us together with each of those, those moments. So Thank you. kudos to you. I guess at this point, I'll say for a last time, at least in this format, thank you. This has been amazing for me to kind of talk through a lot of these issues. Anything else that we didn't touch upon that you wanted to touch upon? No, I just, again, I want to, I'm, I'm running out of these opportunities. I just want to say to, to Staten Island that we are incredibly fortunate to have Staten Island University and the Northwell family uh, be on Staten Island and, and taking care of our loved ones. And, and Doc, I, I've gotten to know you pretty pretty well over the last 15, 16 months, and uh, I have really come to respect you, and, I, and I, I thank you so much for everything you've done, and I thank you for the friendship. Listen, the one thing I'll always say about you is I think the reason you and I always hit it off is I think we share one thing. I truly feel like we've both always felt like we're responsible for every Staten Islander, and I think that's part of these jobs, and I, I really thank you for the opportunity to do this. Thank you, sir. HealthWish wishes to thank our very special guests, James S. Otto, Borough President of Staten Island, and Dr. Brahim Ardolik, Executive Director of Staten Island University Hospital. We're very interested in your health wish. Contact us at healthwish at northwell.edu. Thanks for joining us. We hope to see you again soon.